So we're going to render this. And we see black and stars. Do you know why we only see black and stars? If you're thinking, well, we didn't add a lamp, then you are correct. We have not added a lamp. So remember that in Blender, as we discussed last episode, in the lighting episode, um, that objects reflect zero light when you render them unless you have a light uh, for them to reflect. Meaning that in this view, we're quite happy because we have this kind of invisible, all-knowing work lamp that shows us everything no matter what. But in the rendering view, no light is reflected if there's no lamp around. So we'll add a lamp, and I'm going to place my 3D cursor maybe, I don't know, right, right there-ish. And then shift A to add something, a lamp. Let's look at the sun first. So if we, if we render this out, it's pretty even light, as you can see. Um, that's the nice thing about the sun. You put a sun lamp in there, and um, you can rest assured pretty much that you're going to see what you need to see. So that's kind of a really handy light to have. It's, it's, it's uh, kind of like just bouncing a light off of a, off of a, a bounce board or a wall on a film set. Um, that's the sun. It works, but let's get something a little bit more, uh, a little bit more dynamic, I guess. Here's an area lamp. It's probably pretty bright. Yeah, it sure is. So I'm going to click right mouse on the little, um, level indicator and S for scale and make it a little bit less intense. Now let's just look at our result here. You can start to see that's still pretty intense, actually, but you can kind of see some fall off there on the edges, right? The S, the L, and the E are kind of some some gray is creeping in, because of course, this these letters are bouncing all that light off of them, and uh, they they they're appearing a lot a lot more well hotter, I guess you'd say, uh, than the rest of it, and you can see it again. Now that I've decreased the intensity, we've got the hot spot here kind of in the middle where the light is and it's kind of falling off. Neither of these are bad things, good things, anything. These are just tools that you can use for different effects because obviously if you've got one lamp there, let's look at the results, okay, uh, and then we, let's say, shift D to duplicate and we'll bring the same light right on over here. Actually, I should be constraining this, I think. Grabbing... I just uh, hit the X key to constrain it to the X uh, axis. So hopefully I haven't moved it in the Z space at all. And actually we could confirm by the numbers. So this lamp happens to be at 2.5 Z index. And sure enough, the other one is at 2.5 as well. It's the transform palette. You will fall in love with this. Uh, okay, F12 to render, and now you've got kind of that double spotlight look, you know, you're flying in a spaceship, and there's the big title sequence coming at you, and so your headlights are reflecting off the letters. You've you've seen that kind of thing before, so you've got a little bit of flexibility in your, in your title design there, and kind of the, the overall look and feel. Let's remove one of these for a minute, um, and move this back over to sort of the center. There's that again. Now let's grab our font again. Let's look at, uh, or rather our text, and let's look at um, the nope at the materials um, that that this text is kind of made up of. So light in 3D worlds react two different ways. There's the diffuse light, which would be kind of like this, I guess you could call it a dull area in the in this little sample globe, or in this flat, it would be kind of that area around that hot spot. And then there's specular, and that's going to be more of that hot spot. So diffuse spreads the light out more, makes it, I guess, softer or more diffuse, um, and specular bounces it back um, more more of a, I think of it as a more particulate bounce, but I guess 
really diffuse would be more particulate. But you, you'll get a feel for it. So let's just kind of look. Let's, for instance, change the diffuse color to this sort of blue. Actually, it's probably more of a periwinkle. And we'll render it. And now you see what's going on here. So we've got the where where it would have been gray, for instance, before. It is now blue, meaning that the hot spot is 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 white meaning that it is um what is it multiplying a hundred percent white no it would be i don't know zero percent or a hundred percent of of that color so it's it's if you know your your multiplies and um and uh hard light soft light things like that from gimp or photoshop you'll kind of get a feel for what's going on here so if we actually let's reverse this for a minute so if we if we just say that that's going to be white and that the specular is going you know, that's probably not blue enough the specular is going to be blue let's watch what happens if we render that gray around the edges white on the inside why isn't the white blue well i'll show you we're going to make this black and suddenly the the portion of the the light that is being bounced back is blue so the specular, uh, and actually, could we have seen that in the, yeah, you can see that here in the preview too. I, I forgot to even look there, but yeah. So if the diffuse is, is scattering the light and, and that's black, meaning that it's absorbing all the, or yeah, absorbing all the light, then your specular color is going to show up. Whereas if it's completely white and it's bouncing back all, all possible um, color spectrum, then you're losing the specular uh, shade because you're you're bouncing all the light back. Uh, ba you're bouncing all the light back, all all possible spectrum uh, light spectrum is back, meaning that the there's there's fall off, but but we're not getting any of the color that we've that we've defined. So that's just kind of different ways that the light is going to react really off of any off of any surface in any object in blender so you've got two lamps here um, the way that I've been duplicating them by the way again is just right click and then shift D to duplicate and then if you hit a, a certain axis just like when you're moving it will move that duplicated item in that direction so we'll look at what we've got here that's probably not quite enough light for what we want to do. So we're going to give it these lamps a little bit more intensity, I think. Yeah, I don't think we're going to get by with just two, actually. I don't know why I'm trying to fake... Actually, that's that's getting to where I think I could be. I should mention, probably, since I'm just kind of messing around with lights here, lamps, that you can move these lamps with these sliders. So, the location, you can just kind of, it's a, it's it's really a slider. Uh, I mean, you could type in the number if you know it, but otherwise, if you just click and drag, uh, click with your left mouse button, no less, I know, you're not really used to doing that in Blender, are you? Uh, then you can just kind of move that, that that object around and like I say if you know where your camera is it's at 8 so if you know where that is it kind of you know you kind of get a sense for just how far away from different objects you really are which I don't know in the 3d views for me uh, kind of a I like that I like that look if you have certain variables locked in then it kind of makes things a lot easier so I should mention um, I mean I showed you last time that you can view certain things textured or solid, or wireframe. Um, I'm going solid here. The camera, for whatever reason, in the animation mode, uh, defaults to wireframe. So if you hit Z or Z, uh, then that that changes your camera view to solid as well. Uh, the wireframes tend to get a little bit lost, I, I think. Okay, so we've got a pretty good setup here. I think. I think this is this is pretty good. This light could probably be a little bit over to catch the E, but we're going to be a little bit stylish. We're going to go with this. 
Um, let's do a simple animation just to kind of see a, a typical kind of movement. This this won't be new to you. This will be something that we've already done in what the third episode I think it was. But let's do it anyway. We know that we want the camera to end up on this screen. Why do we know that? Well, because this is the title that we want people to be looking at, right? So that's this is at least either the the, the end or the midway point. Um, and for this simple animation, we'll just call it the end. Um, realistically, we might only have it be the midway because if you're moving in and around titles, maybe you'll pull back and then you'll zip off to the side to get the title out of your way. But for now, we'll just we'll 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 go with the idea that that's the end point. Uh, we can always add more at the end later. So in that case, we know that we're at 24 frames per second. Um, so 24 seconds or 24 frames would be one second. 50 would be two. Um, let's just kind of go for yeah, 77 ish because my mouse led me there. So I'm going to hit I for insert keyframe. Remember that the location of your mouse is kind of important. You want to be kind of in your 3D workspace when you hit I. Well, that's not entirely true. You could actually do it in a couple of places, but you see now that you get different sets of options depending on where you are. So it's, it's still a keyframe insertion, but you don't get the same options. You, you get a different set according to what window you're hovering over. So in this case, we'll be in our 3D view, hit I for location, and I'm going to go ahead and set a rotation as well. Not that I actually intend to rotate the camera, but hey, maybe we will at some point. Notice that